Hello, my name is Ollie Furnival. Welcome to this video on teaching and learning. Um, if you'd like to follow me on YouTube, please subscribe to Teaching and Learning for plenty more videos about education. My email, oliverfurnival at gmail.com. I'm using a booklet in this video which you might want to um, email me and ask and I'll send it to you, no problem. And follow me on Twitter at IBCoordinator underscore. Um, today's video is for students and teachers and it's all about preparing for the theory of knowledge um, presentation. So what I'm going to do, I've created this booklet which, um, as I said, you can, you can by all means email me and I will gladly um, send this to you or your school. And the idea is that I use this with my students, uh, my TOK students, for the purpose of the video, instead of theory of knowledge, I'll call it TOK, um, to get them ready for their um, presentation. So what I'm going to do here um, is I've put this clearly, hopefully, so the idea is if you're preparing for this or you're indeed teaching students about this, then you can um, go to the relevant part of the video um, and stop and pause and look at what's on the screen. So I'm going to go through the basics, the goals, the format of the video, um, focus on the DOK presentation, looking at knowledge questions, uh, the assessment criteria, then I'm going to show you some examples that my students have used and then I'm going to focus on the forms and set you a, a presentation plan that hopefully you can use as you go through the process. So to start off with, um, the basics of your TOK presentation. Um, you can see here that it's 10 minutes per student um, and you can be um, up to three groups for your presentation. So each student gets roughly um, 10 minutes. Don't go over that because um, <coughs> if your video is sent off to the IB, they can stop listening at 10 minutes. Um, the presentation is graded out of 10 um, and it's worth 33% of your final grade. So your essay is graded out of 10 and your presentation which makes 20 but the essay score is doubled. So the essay in essence is out of 20 and the presentation is out of 10. Okay? And what happens is your teacher in your school will grade your presentation. After your teacher has graded the presentation, he or she will send the grades off to the IB and the IB will ask um, this each school to send in some samples. So what happens is your teacher will send, depending on your class size, a selection of presentations. And what the IB then might do um, is um, keep the same score, grade you or your, or your peers up, or grade you and your peers down if they feel your teacher has been too soft on you. Um, as I said earlier, you have a group of three, uh, maximum in your presentation. Um, the way you do your presentation, you can see that there's quite a few different ways you can do it. Um, anything from, um, what I'm doing today, presenting to you with, with uh, maybe a Prezi or a PowerPoint. If you're in a group, you could do it as an interview, you could do it as a, as a debate in your group, um, using all sorts of multimedia. What you're not allowed to do is write your presentation down as an essay and stand up in front of your class and read an essay. That's, uh, that's the only thing you're not really supposed to do. So that's the basics of the presentation. Um, so the goal well, the, goal, the main goal of the presentation is to get a real-life situation, something that's happened in the world, and apply your TOK thinking to a real-life situation, um, which uses all the areas of um, knowledge, ways of knowing, that you've been looking at in the course, um, in the TOK world, if you like, and putting them into the real world. Okay, and I'll, I'll go through what the presentation um, actually looks like um, now. So, um... This is from the TOK guide, as you can see in my introduction page, um, some of the information today is from the TOK guide, first assessments of 2015. And you can see here the IB have given us um, a clear map of the presentation. So we start off with a real life situation, and later on I will give you some real life situations my students have used. So this real life situation uh, must have happened, um, it could either be something you found in the news, or it could be something that's happened in your life. Don't make it up um, as something, um, something that hasn't happened, or um, something that you've, you've dreamt about, for example, the, ID, the IB wants specific real life situations, okay? From that real life situation, what you then do is you extract, you create um, a knowledge question, which I will um, come to later. And from that knowledge question, what you do then is you analyse the knowledge question, you debate the knowledge question, you discuss um, the knowledge question, you look at different um, ideas based on a knowledge question. Um, and from that discussion, when you've looked at, of course, more than, more than one perspective on it, what you do then, um, you could come to a conclusion on your um, knowledge question, and what you then do is you put your conclusion back into the real life situation and see how your conclusion matches up to the situation you started with. 
And then what you do is you look at one or two, probably only maximum one or two, because you've only got 10 minutes, and you see how your conclusion um, fits into other real life situations. So you really want to start off by spending one, one and a half minutes describing your real life situation, looking at um, your knowledge question, looking at how they connect with each other, and then having your, the main body is your pulling it apart, analysing it, looking at different ideas of why they occur, and then going back into your real life situation. You can see the dotted line here, the IB have, this is the real world, and then we have the TOK world, okay, where we form and TOK knowledge questions and we discuss them. So I'm going to talk a little bit more depth now about the focus of your um, TOK presentation. And in this focus, I'm going to concentrate on knowledge questions because as a TOK student or teacher, you know that the knowledge question is the centre. And if you get that wrong, then your presentation and indeed your essay when you're answering a, a knowledge question from the IB. Um, that, if that goes wrong, then you're going to be in trouble um, throughout, okay? Um, so, with your real-life situation, okay, very, very important. Um, a a real-life situation must allow you to have a knowledge question that can be explored from it in depth. And also, your real-life situation should allow you, from that knowledge question, to apply it back to other real-life situations. So, do think carefully about the real-life situation. And it says here, the real-life situation, it's your launching pad. It's where everything comes from. Um, so, you've got your real-life situation. Okay, and from that real life situation, you've then got to um, formulate a knowledge question. Okay, and a knowledge question, as I said, is vital. And the information I'm going to give to you, some of it comes from the TOK guide, uh, page 20, first assessments. Um, so we've got a you know, very, very basic on, um, example here. If we're looking at history, um, and you want to talk about you know, World War One, okay. Um, a bad knowledge question is why did World War I start? That's quite a nice history question. But a knowledge question, as we're going to find out, um, is something like why do we have different ideas about events in the past? So I'm going to um, explain to you what a knowledge question is and hopefully you can see why this one's bad and this one is good. Okay? So here are three key ideas about a knowledge question. One, well it's about knowledge, okay? obviously. It's concerned with how we construct knowledge, how knowledge is gained, how we get knowledge, and how we evaluate knowledge. Okay? So it's all about knowledge. Okay? Your knowledge question must be open-ended. There must be one, uh, more than one plausible answer to it. Okay? And it must be contestable. It must be debatable. The knowledge question is no good if it's easily answered, one-sided, thank you very much. That's not a knowledge question. A knowledge question should be expressed in general terms rather than subject-specific terms. Okay? Subject specific World War I, okay? Ideas about the past. And with this question, it allows me to look, well, how do we get knowledge? Why can one society or one person have different ideas than, a sh than another society or another people? But I'm not stuck on World War I here. I'm looking at how knowledge is gained and how can something that did or did not happen can be seen as different from different parts of the world or even from the same parts of the world, okay? This does not have a subject in it. There are many different ideas um, about why we might have different uh, knowledge, um, understanding of events in the past. It could be the government of the day, it could be the textbooks we read from, it could be the, um, the religion, the religious belief we live under, it could be the personal views of your, of your teacher. Okay, there are many different reasons why. Okay, it could be the propaganda of the time, it could be people were too scared to speak out at the time. I'm making this up as I go along, but I'm thinking of different reasons why we could have different ideas about the past. Going back to um, the knowledge question, okay? A good way to start a knowledge question, here, look at these starters, to what extent, or how much, how do we know, what well does, under what circumstances, why do or why does. And from these, this allows discussion. To what extent, how much, is it zero through to 100, okay? And we can say, we can discuss it and we can end up with often, rarely, okay, after our discussion on that knowledge question, okay? Um, within your knowledge question, it's always good to mention your ways of knowing or and slash or the areas of knowledge. You don't have to have both, but they can be in your knowledge question. Um, and also, if you have a look here with your knowledge question, you can use TOK vocabulary, right, ranging from belief through to values. You know, in TOK, we look at evidence, we 
we look at intuition, we look at justification. Putting, those, putting these, this vocabulary into your knowledge questions shows that you've got a TOK focus. So have your ways of knowing and areas of knowledge and your TOK vocabulary within your question. Just a nice chart here showing going from um, not a knowledge question through to a good knowledge question, kind of summarising what I've just said. So, we want it to be open-ended about knowledge, couched in TOK vocabulary and ideas, okay? Um, it can't be closed, it can't be a statement, it must be a question, it can't be subject-specific, okay? I'm going to give you a couple of examples now from the TOK guide um, page 22. So if you're looking at future population growth in Africa, and not, this is not a knowledge question, how can we predict future population growth in Africa? It's too narrow, okay, um, in, the, in the discipline of population studies, okay? From future popula population growth in Africa, how can a mathematical model give us knowledge even if it does not yet, if it does not yield, sorry, accurate predictions, okay? This is general, this explores the purpose and nature of modelling in mathematics, okay? So, a model is being used to predict future growth, and you're going to discuss how can it be, um, how can it give us knowledge if it doesn't give us accurate predictions. And from that, it's, very, it's, it's far more open than just focusing on Africa. And here we've got the placebo effect, okay? How does the placebo effect work? Well, that might provide, it's involved here, a technical explanation in psychology. We don't want that, okay? Instead of saying, how does that work, we could say, how can we establish that X is an active ingredient in causing Y? Now, from this, it's very general, and you could look at different areas of what you've been studying across your diploma program, um, and it says here in the, in the guide that this is, in fact, a classic uh, TOK question. So, let's go back to your presentation and your TOK question. Your TOK question must be explored using examples, okay? You must analyse different perspectives in relation to your question. Don't just talk about you, don't just talk about the other side, don't just give one side. I'll come, I'll come later um, to the uh, assessment rubric to show what would happen to you if you did, okay? We don't want just personal opinion, we're using reasoned arguments, okay, in our um, discussion as well. And your question in your presentation must be clearly connected to the real life situation, okay? And this must be explained in your presentation. And as I said earlier, um, the question should allow you to connect to other real life situations. In doing this, you're going to hit the top grade in your presentation, okay? So the thinking that you give, how does it apply to a number of different contexts? So, let's have a look at the assessment criteria. Um, the good thing about this TOK presentation is the form that the IB give us that must be filled in by you as you plan really fits nicely within this assessment criteria. So to get the top grade, we have a well, a well formulated knowledge question and we can see here that the presentation is focused on it. You're not going off on a tangent and ignoring your question. And your question is clearly connected to your real life situation. When you've got your question and you've explained your uh, connection to your real life situation, you effectively explore it in the context of that situation. The argument you use must be convincing and you must investigate different perspectives. You can't just say, I believe A and this person believes B. If you want to get a top grade, you've got to investigate why. Why are there different perspectives? As I showed earlier, is it their age? Um, is it the education system they come under? Is it um, faith? Um, are they using emotion? to come to a conclusion, for example. Okay, and the outcomes of the analysis are significant, so your outcome is significant to the chosen uh, real life situation and to others, okay? And what we do then is looking at the same areas, what the IB have done is say, well, you know, well formulated, the well formulated has gone here, okay? Um, and you can see that it's, it's similar, but the further we go down, you know, we've got some attempt there. Okay, we've got it, we've got it, it's explored. Well, some attempt, you haven't really explored it all the way through. So that grade um, will reflect that. Okay, all the way down to one. But as I say to my students, we all start here. 
So let's do what it says on the rubric to stay at a 9, 10, level 5 answer. So there's the rubric. Please um, pause this video if you need to and study that rubric. And it will come clear in my planning document um, and the IB's one later. Okay, so some examples then. Well, I'm going to just show you a couple of examples from students um, who have given me permission to show these. I've, I've, I've made them anonymous, okay? One real life situation is um, it's, um, we're in Japan and a student found that nearly one in five Japanese people are reluctant to buy food from Fukushima. Fukushima, you may remember, is where the um, 2011 um, tsunami and earthquake were. And we had the um, issues at the nuclear power plant. So the student has found an article. Nearly one in five Japanese are reluctant to buy Fukushima food. It's a real life situation. It's got it from the Wall Street Journal. Okay, and then this was a boy, then what the student did, created a question, when, if at all, should knowledge be limited in a search for medical pro, oh, sorry. Sorry, I what I've done, I wanna get rid of that. Okay, what, is, what the um, student did here was, um, how much um, evidence is needed to be able to persuade people um, to make scientific decisions, okay? Sorry, I've, I've put the wrong question there, but, what we're looking at is he's looking at how much evidence do scientists need to be able to prove, uh, to be able to persuade people to make decisions. So really, he's looking at different amounts of evidence in the food. The question I had there actually um, applies to this real life situation. This is a different real life situation, and this was done by two students last year who um, had 20 minutes, and what they did was they found this article about a um, a lady in. Britain, so she had an amnio test, and in, in the test she had, um, she was told that there was potential that um, her child would have Down's syndrome. So the person then aborted the baby and regretted it ever since. Okay, and this question. When, if at all, should knowledge be limited in a search for medical progress in the natural sciences? These students wanted to look at, was it right for knowledge to be given? Should we always give knowledge to people? And in different situations when you should and shouldn't give knowledge out in um, medical progress in, in the natural sciences. Okay, now this is really important, this next um, student example. Um, Japan has not yet banned the death penalty, okay? Um, despite Amnesty International wanting it to, okay, and there's um, a real life situation there, um, and a student spoke about the amount of um, Japanese people killed um, by the government, okay. Now, a, a mistake that you must not make is that the, the IB do not want you to give your own personal opinion on should we have the death penalty. That's not a knowledge question, okay. This is a knowledge question. How should a country get its ethical knowledge? Ethics being an area of no, uh, knowledge in um, TOK. And she's saying, should it be through its own culture or should it be through shared ethics? So in essence, she's looking at personal versus shared knowledge there, and looking at how should countries make ethical decisions? Should every country in the world have the same ethics or should it be based on different things in the past of a country? Um, not once in that presentation did that student say whether or not she agreed with the death penalty, because it's not important. It's how countries make decisions. And this is the, this is the final example I want to show you. This is one I'm going to come back to later and show you how the student filled the form in. Um, and this was um, the artwork fountain by Marcel Duchamp, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Um, in 1970 in New York, this piece of art was refused um, to be allowed into an art gallery in New York because people said, well, that's not acceptable art, that's not art, okay? That's a real life situation from 100 years ago. Um, and what the student wanted to do, um, focusing on the arts as her um, area of knowledge is, who should justify the boundary between what is acceptable and not acceptable art? Shared knowledge or personal knowledge? Should that be like um, an art committee or the law of the country or should that be on the personal knowledge of the artist? So, let's think now about what you've got to do, okay? What you've got to do, and this is really, really important, is as you go along, you've got to fill in 
the form called the TKPPD form. Okay? This is very, very important because the IB will not look at your video unless they specifically ask the school to send the videos in. The IB, when they ask to moderate, will ask to look at this only. First thing I'm going to tell you is when you fill in this form, there's a maximum of 500 words. You must stick to that because the IB can say to um, its examiners, stop counting after 500 words. Now, what you will notice in this form is this form follows, as I said earlier, the assessment rubric. So you have a title of your presentation, okay? You have a length of it, um, amount of people, and then what you've got to do is you've got to describe your real life situation. And if you look back to the rubric, we've got our specified real life situation. Okay? Describe your real life situation. Describe what happened. Then you've got to state your central knowledge question, which of course must be a question. Okay? Then what you've got to do, you've got to explain the connection. How does your knowledge question connect to your real life situation? So if I go back here, a well formulated knowledge question that's clearly connected to a specified real life situation. So the IB here are letting you meet the rubric. Fill that in and you're hitting the rubric if you fill that in properly. So, what's just a real life situation? What's your question? How are they connected? And then what you've got to do is outline your presentation, okay? What you don't just do is a list of what you're going to say. I will say one opinion, I'll give a counterclaim, I'll give a conclusion. They want more than that. They want you to show an analysis of your main knowledge question and related knowledge questions, the second knowledge questions, the subsidiary ones you can have, um, as well as all the arguments and perspectives. You know, you can write this as you like, as, a, as an essay, if you like, or you can do it as a, a list of points that, of course, include what is shown here. Okay, so the IB will obviously be interested in what your presentation was, so give them as much information as you can. And after that, what you do, You've come to your conclusion at the end of your um, presentation, and then you've got to say, well, how is it significant to your real-life situation? And how, does it, um, how is the conclusion relevant to other real-life situations? Think about that for a minute, what I've shown you in this video. One here, the outcomes of your analysis are shown to be significant to chosen real-life situation. And if we move back up, when I showed you the um, the map, if you like, of our presentation. Well, here's your conclusion, here's your outcome, back into your real-life situation. So it's really quite nice how the IB form really just asks you to show what you have done. Follow how you followed the rubric and the form allows you to do that. There it is there. And what happens is then, is that you've got a teacher um, and the teacher, your teacher or teachers, if they moderate amongst themselves, the teacher will fill in your grade and then the teacher will justify why they've given you that grade. And it's important that your teacher does this properly, okay? So any teachers watching, um, the IB really wants to show you. Don't just say, well, it was really good, because that doesn't help anybody. You've got to show exactly how you saw them meet the rubric to show that. So it's almost... Um, like the teachers, if you like, that your comments are on trial as well. So, TOK students, remind your teachers of this. And TOK teachers, I'm sure, of course, you know this. Um, so, I showed you earlier, I spoke to you earlier about the piece of art, the back, the, 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 um, the art that wasn't allowed in to the New York, the fountain, it wasn't allowed into the New York um, art exhibition in 1917. And here's anonymously, uh, the anonymous student um, how she's filled her form in, okay? So, you can see, she, this, like many of my students, they had to really cut back on their 500 words. They, had to, they, they, they tried to do too much and had to cut it back. So, she described what happened, very brief description there. He had this urinal, and it was rejected as not acceptable art. Okay, and then all you've got to do is state your question, and then what the student did was there is, she explained the connection about the express how fountain was a 
a new, new art at the time that was, was criticised um, by some but not as others. So from that she wondered what the boundary should be. Should it be the artist's personal knowledge or should it be the spectators or society's shared knowledge? Okay, and she's put in there how, how it comes into her um, areas, of, areas of knowledge and she's saying why it's important, okay, about freedom, etc. in art, okay. And then what the student's done here, having explained that, is she's given her overview of the presentation. So you can see here, um, she's explained the real life situation and link to the knowledge question as you have to. She then has a subsidiary question, okay? And then from her subsidiary questions, she um, explains and she argues, okay? And you can see she's using emotion and imagination um, versus reason. And considering that question, she's looking at different perspectives here. She's got her perspective and she's got examples to back it up there. Okay, and as she goes through there, she's got another subsidiary question. Okay, and here the subsidiary question, a third one. This is what type of shared knowledge should justify the boundary? Okay, so if there is a boundary, she's saying what should it be? Should it be law? Okay, and then she gives another example, um, another real life situation there. Um, of Banksy, um, another famous artist, and as you can see here, this is like the outline of her discussion. So she's showing the IB that there are different perspectives. She has got her own perspectives there, and you can see she gave the conclusion that the artist's personal knowledge should justify the boundary of acceptable artwork, but law slash shared knowledge should justify the boundary of the art making process. Well, what does that mean? Well, what the student had to do then is show how that applies to her real life situation one, the 1917 um, art exhibition. Based on my conclusion, the fountain piece of art is acceptable art and art making process because it was a new way of art which, saw, um, which the artist saw as acceptable. It didn't break the law, so the artist's personal knowledge is more important. Okay? So she spoke remember about should the law be the ones who decide on the process. Art making process. Now, with her second one, she's got um, that led the MSL and Davignon, excuse my poor French, and her uh, Banksy's artwork. What she's saying there is this applies here to real life situation one. But with Banksy, she's saying the artwork is acceptable, but the art ma making process isn't acceptable because it's illegal. Um, she's saying that Banksy um, graffitis on walls, which is illegal, so therefore the art should be banned unless she changes the process. So, what she's saying is. Um, it's not the art that's wrong, but it's not acceptable how the artist made the work. And that's her, that's her conclusion, and there she's applied it to three different real life situations. So I'm her teacher, I've got rid of the grade I gave her there, and me as a teacher, I provided um, in-depth comments there to show the IB the links of the curriculum. Okay, and I, I've even um, shown the guide, how it applies to art, art and morality, um, links the knowledge framework of, of art in page um, 42 and then I said it was credible, well organised, okay, she had a well made Prezi, the student there, sorry her name's there, her first name there, um, clearly described etc etc and it goes through there um, and I kind of got filled the box there because I, I, I gave that quite a good grade and I really wanted to justify um, to the IB why I gave that a good grade. Okay, so Finally, what I'd like to do is show, um, show you students and teachers, please, please feel free to ask me if you, if you would like this, to have a presentation plan, okay? So as a student, really this presentation plan is similar to the um, TOK um, planning document. Plan it like this, have a real life situation, what a real life situation is, describe your real life situation, then you have another box stating your knowledge question, okay? Then you can explain the link. So pretty much this is the same as the IB's um, document, okay, at the moment. And then I'm going to ask you to think about, well, how are you going to explore your question? And I've put here, use convincing arguments and investigate different perspectives, clearly on the um, IB rubric, okay? So have a claim, an opinion, back it up with examples have different perspectives to claim one, reasons why people have got different perspectives, there's your investigation, what are the reasons why, and then give a conclusion. You might want to refute 
different perspectives. You might want to um, concede from the first claim. Okay? And then, how can this claim be related to the real-life situation? Okay? So, excuse me, in the 10-minute essay uh, presentation, one and a half to two minutes setting it up, then you've really got maybe you know seven minutes here before you get your conclusion with your claims. Now, I've put here on your planning document, claim two, you just repeat it, claim three, okay, or you know, with claim it could also be a question that's of course discussed. You're not really going to get through any more than three. It might be that you only get through one or two, depending on how deep you go, how much you investigate, how many different perspectives you talk about. Okay? When you've done that, you come out, you, you create your outcome. Show how your conclusion has significance, going back to your real life situation, and then show how your conclusion has significance for other real life situations. Um, and from that, before you even attempt your presentation, assess yourself. Have you, have you done these? These are what the rubric is asking you to do. Yes, I have. Good. Give yourself a happy face, give yourself a tick. No, I haven't. And I need to, I need to what? What do I need to do in my presentation plan that I haven't done so far? So that's a pretty basic, but I hope effective plan that you can use for your presentation. So through this video, um, that's what I've gone through. Hopefully you can see, uh, watch this again. Please watch it over, stop at the main points. Um, thank, thanks to my... Um, recorder who's got this on here as well so you can pause it and have a look. If you would like to um, ask me to send you this, then here are my contact details. Um, thank you very much for watching and good luck in your presentation.